So not too long ago, I made two different videos about shooting on a mobile phone and using it for filming purposes. And uh, those videos did not go so well. Not only did I have a lot of issues surrounding using the app Filmic Pro, but really not a lot of you liked those videos. In fact, they're my most disliked videos on this channel. But hey, I was just voicing my opinion and that's opinions and the internet for you. After seeing how much you guys did not like me voicing my opinion, I decided to do it again. Today I'm going to talk about the Snoper Atom mobile phone gimbal. The thing that intrigued me about the Snoper Atom is you don't actually have to use a mobile phone on it, you can actually use a GoPro on there as well. And regardless of the fact that my GoPro 7 already has inbuilt stabilization, I still thought that would be a really cool idea. I've seen the brand Snoker floating around and when I saw that they were bringing out a new mobile phone gimbal and they had a Kickstarter campaign about it, I decided I'd give it a shot. First up, I wanna talk about the design of the gimbal. It's actually rather unique in design. First of all, it's foldable, which is great for travel. It fits in pretty much anything. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of YouTubers fitting it into their pockets. Those are guys, they've got men's clothing and of course that's gonna fit. Anything fits in men's pockets. Women's pockets is another story. But regardless of that, it is very small and very compact and it can fit in pretty much any bag that you like, which is really key. I mean, having something that is so light and compact means you're gonna use it more because you're gonna bring it out with you. If something's heavy and cumbersome and hard to set up, then you're not gonna use it. So yeah, the gimbal is foldable, it's light, it weighs 440 grams, which really in the scheme of things is not that much. And what really got me is it has wireless and wired charging. You can actually connect your device to the gimbal itself in order to charge it if it doesn't have wireless charging capabilities. And then if it does have wireless charging capabilities, the pad behind your phone will be able to charge it, all at just the click of a button, which is really nifty. My pre-order also came with a mini tripod base for it as well, which means I can lay it down pretty much anywhere. Snoper also have an app for the Atom, which allows you to access all of its features, which is very handy. It's Bluetooth connectable, so everything's streamlined and you can just access everything via the buttons on the gimbal. We'll get more into that later. And also on top of that, there is an additional audio interface built into the gimbal, which is a cool idea in theory, but we'll also get to that one later. Finally, it does state on their website that the battery life of the gimbal is 24 hours. Now, I don't know how they judged that. I didn't quite look into the specs of how they judged that because I was definitely not able to get 24 hours battery life out of it. When we were out doing the testing, we were out there for less than six hours. It was full when we started. It was completely charged when we started. And then by the time we finished, less than six hours later, it is less than half of the battery left. So I don't know if they're factored in heavy use or even just using the wireless charging function on and off for that time period, but it's definitely not 24 hours from what I can see. But still, I mean, who's gonna be using their phone gimbal for 24 hours straight? So yeah. On their website, the charge time is stated at three hours. I was getting three and a half hours. Now that might've been because I completely depleted the battery and then recharged it. So I, I don't know if that had something to do with it, but three and a half hours was what I got. And eh, that's all right, that's pretty average anyway. So let's get on to the functions of the Snoper Atom. Now, the Snoper Atom has quite a number of buttons on the gimbal itself, which are accessible and customizable through the app. So you can program all of those buttons to do various things like spinning the camera 180 degrees, changing it from landscape to portrait. By the way, is IGTV still a thing? I don't even know. Resetting the gimbal to its default position, turning on the wireless charging, turning off the wireless charging, accessing the parameters of your video itself. So changing the ISO, changing the shutter speed, whatever, and also setting focus and zoom. What I also like about being able to change and customize those buttons is it's really easy to do and it's very straightforward. There's no heavy menu system in this app. It's a really nice layout, but it does have a lot of room for improvement. Now I understand that the Snoper Atom is a new product and maybe they are gonna bring out future releases of certain features in the app, which I, I wouldn't doubt it. It is very, very new. So that sort of thing will happen regularly when it's going through its teething stages with the open world, with the global community, but it is very bare bones. One of the first things I noticed when using the app is going through the settings. I was only able to change it to NTSC settings. So 
30, 60, 120 frames per second. That's not really much of an issue because there isn't much difference between NTSC and PAL settings, the 30 and the 25 frames per second, but it is noticeable. And when you're trying to streamline your post-production process, that can be a little bit of a pain. But something like that will surely come in an update because this is a brand new gimbal and it is a new function in the app. So I assume that that will come in an update very soon and hopefully it does. I also just want to mention here that the Snoper Atom is super easy to set up, even accessing the app and having everything set up, I had it done within minutes, it was all ready to shoot. So kudos to them for that because that is something that really annoys me is if a piece of equipment takes too long to set up, it can get quite tedious if you're trying to move quickly. So. That's really good. Now, one thing I really do want to talk about here is the audio connection through the gimbal. There's something wrong with it. Unfortunately, I think it might be a little bit more widespread than just me. I don't think it is the gimbal itself. It is something to do with the compression within the app. Now, if you have a listen to this test, I will bring it up right now. You can kind of hear what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is audio recorded directly from the phone's camera app using the Rode VideoMic Me. Okay, and here is audio using the phone's camera app, but the microphone is connected to the gimbal instead. And this one is the microphone connected to the gimbal using the app. And now the microphone connected to the phone, but still using the app. So you'll notice that anything that is using the gimbal and the app or just the gimbal itself has a little bit of a problem. There's either a high pitch buzz in the background which might have something to do with the connection through the gimbal itself and then also anything that's direct through the app regardless of whether you are using the microphone through the phone itself and through the gimbal, you're still getting the same results. So clearly there's something wrong with the compression in there. I don't really know when that sort of thing will be fixed. Hopefully it's high on their list and I don't doubt it will be fixed in the future, but right now it is a little bit of an annoyance, especially since I'm trying to review the product and I want to give it a good review, I really do, but that is a big, big problem. So yeah, gimbal itself, really good. App, not so good. So let's have a talk about the performance of the gimbal itself. It does pretty much what it says on the box. The gimbal can hold 310 grams of weight. Now that does depend on the size and shape of your phone as well, obviously, because it can interfere with the motors. If you've got something that's quite large, like I've got with an S9 Plus, I did have a little bit of trouble with my phone hitting the tilt motor and that got a little bit annoying, but I don't really use that tilt motor too much. And in the circumstance where I would be using my phone on that gimbal, it, it's not really much of an issue for me, but you can just shunt your phone over just a little bit to clear the motor anyway. There are also a couple of different modes you can set on the gimbal. The main ones are walking mode and running mode. Running mode just has a little bit more responsiveness to it compared to walking mode, which is a lot more smooth motion. Now, I don't know about you, but I much prefer having a more responsive gimbal because I know and can predict my framing a little bit nicer than something that is a slow pan or a slow moving gimbal which does take a little bit to catch up with my movement. And I don't know, I'm just a fan of the running mode overall. I did a little bit of a stability test using both modes where I was walking with the gimbal in walking mode and then running with the gimbal in running mode and both of them seem to be absolutely fine. Of course, there is that little bit of up and down motion as you run and as you walk, that's just natural. That is a suspension of your arm and you can combat that using a couple of different walking techniques and just really thinking about your movements. But all in all, that does what it says on the box. So I'm really happy with that. Here's something else that's really cool with the Snoper Atom, and that is two different tracking modes you can use. You can do face tracking and you can do object tracking. I gave both a little bit of a go. Now, object tracking I found really interesting and it could be really cool if you're trying to just track a single object just make sure that it is large enough for your camera to recognize, for your phone to recognize, but you can select an area in the screen and track 
back that particular object that you've selected. So I think that's pretty cool and people could get quite creative with that. On YouTube, I saw a video where somebody tracked a ball rolling through shot and hey, that was pretty cool. Now face tracking, as soon as their audio issue gets sorted, I think face tracking is going to be a really handy option for vloggers. If you're vlogging on your mobile phone and you just want to take your phone stabilized out and about and you want to record something, you can face track yourself. So if you're moving around quite a bit and you've just placed your gimbal down on a surface and you want to move from wherever to wherever, let's just say you're doing a cooking show and you're moving around your kitchen or something, as long as you're still mostly facing the camera, the camera will follow you. So that's really awesome. As long as they can get those audio issues fixed, I think this will be a perfect option for somebody who wants to vlog on their phone. There are also functions for photos. I didn't really delve into that, to be honest, because that wasn't really what I wanted to test it with. But if you do wanna see that, I'm happy to do it. Please just leave a comment down below if you would like to see me try and take photos and go through the photo functions on it. That's totally cool, just let me know. And then also you can do time lapses and motion time lapses. That's pretty standard with a lot of gimbals these days. You can program in to do a time lapse using their onboard app. I did find that a couple of times the app did freeze or shut down. I feel like maybe I was overloading the app. I, I don't know what I put in there. It did seem to be standard settings. It didn't seem to be anything bad. So I, I don't know why it was shutting down, but it just did. Maybe that's another bug in the system. So. Hopefully those bugs are fixed in the future. Right now, I'm gonna steer clear from using the application unless I'm doing a motion time-lapse. And even then, I probably use my GoPro to do the time-lapse part of it, but then use my phone to program the motion of that time-lapse. But I am gonna steer away from using the app and the audio interface for now. And hopefully that bug is fixed in the future. And if it is fixed in the future and I do notice that it is fixed, I will leave a comment down below just letting you know that it is all fixed and that things are a lot better. Much like I did with my updates with Filmic Pro. Even though Filmic Pro didn't actually get fixed, it was kind of an anomaly and uh, look, never mind if you're interested, just watch the video. So my final thoughts about this gimbal. I think it's really good as a gimbal. It's fantastic. The functionality of all of the customizable buttons, everything about it seems streamlined and that app has a lot of potential, but as I said, there's a lot of room for improvement and things definitely 100% need to be fixed before that thing is usable. I don't know how that sort of thing has flown under the radar and the app has been released into the world like that. If you're releasing a new product and you want to make the best impression possible, you'd want to try and fix those problems and those seem like pretty major issues to me. It's nothing against them. I'm sure that there's a lot of stress under building something like this. I'm 100% sure there's a lot of stress under building something like a brand new gimbal and releasing it into the world. So hopefully they do fix those problems soon. And um, I'm really looking forward to using the full functionality of that app. So those are my thoughts on the Snoper Atom gimbal. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you have any ideas about something you might wanna see specifically with the gimbal, or you want me to try something out, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to give it a go and show you guys some more content with this piece of kit. Right now, I'm really happy with my purchase. I just really hope that that app gets fixed. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give this video a big fat thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday.